Hey everyone, Josh here with Fresh Start Customs, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make these 2D layered um, ornaments here. I was requested to show how to make like a little picture of an image on an offset here on top, and then text on the back of the uh, design. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. Ideally, you want to start with a vector-based design here, like I have this little panda warrior. If you can't do that and you need a rasterized image, I'm going to turn this into a rasterized image so you can see what's going on here first. Um, this is essentially a JPEG where you got this big white square in the background. Um, what you want to do is you want to create this into a vector-based image if possible. It'll make your life a lot easier. You just go up here and click on Image Trace and then click on Expand. Once it's expanded, you can double click on the, the white zone, click one more time so just one of these white zones are selected. Then we're gonna go to select, click on same, and then we're gonna click on fill and stroke. That's gonna select all the white area. And then you're gonna just click delete. And uh, now it is a vector just like up here. But we're gonna delete that and we're gonna just go off this one vector here. I just wanted to show you guys that really quick. If you're trying to import like a PNG or JPEG and you're gonna turn it into a vector like this. Ideally you want it to be a full black and white photo if you're gonna do that um, or you can just create a vector from scratch. Um, with all that out of the way let's go ahead and jump in on how to actually start this. So we're gonna be using this little panda warrior here that I created a while ago and uh, what we originally need to do is create an offset path for him. So we're gonna uh, click on him, click on object, go down to path, and then we're going to go to offset path. Right now it looks kind of ugly, but that's okay. I'm only going to offset it by the default amount here, which is this here. I'm going to click OK. And then uh, what I want to do is I want to unite all of this jumbled mess together. So I'm going to click this unite button under pathfinder here, and that's going to unite all of those shapes together. And then um, if you don't have Pathfinder, you can click on Window and then click on Pathfinder and it'll open up that way. But while you have that still selected as the top layer here, we're going to get rid of the fill and then we're going to turn it on to Stroke. I like to use red for cut lines. And as you can see, it now has all the red cut line around here, but we still have some of the center we need to clean up. So what I like to do is I like to select this, go to Object, and then click Ungroup. And then, as you can see, that created all of this as a separate group. Um, now I'm going to hold down Shift and deselect the red zone here. And then I'm going to group all of these black uh, objects back together. So I'll go back up to Object, Select Group. So now they're two separate functions. we got the red function is cut, and then the black is engraved. So if I click on the red section, double click on him, uh, I can then do this isolated se uh, selection mode here. We can get rid of these centers just like this by clicking on them and hitting delete. And then we can clean up these stray nodes. The only real one here is on the sword. So we're gonna click this little uh, curvature pen and we're gonna click on that cut line and select that stray node and we'll hit delete. You can clean up all these little stray nodes as much as you want. The fewer you have, the better, in my opinion. But we're gonna just go with that for today's video for sake of time. And there you have it. We now have this set as an offset um, cut here. Now what we need to do is we need to create a circle. So we'll go to our, our little um, ellipse tool. You just click and hold here and go to ellipse tool. Then you can hold down shift and you can kind of just draw a circle out how big you want it. We're going to go something like this, and then I'm going to move it over just a smidge like this. And then what I want to do is I want to copy this, so Command C or um, Edit Copy. And then you can go Edit, Paste, and Place. And that's going to paste a circle right over top of this circle. You can't see it right now, but there is a circle on top of this circle. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure both the width and height are linked together. So if you change one, it changes the other. And we're going to shrink this circle down. So as you can see, this is the circle on top of the circle is now shrinking smaller to create this outline here. 
And that's what we're doing. We're just kind of shrinking that down. We're going to say something like that, maybe one higher. We're going to go something like this here. So that looks great uh, so far. Now what we want to do is we want to create our background layer, which is this uh, separate layer that's going to be on the, the back side. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to click the outer layer, the outer circle, hold down shift, and click the outline of this character here. And we're going to hold alt and then drag it down here. Now this is going to be our back layer. What we're going to do is select both of these. And we're going to click that unite button again and as you can see that united it together this is going to be the solid piece of wood in the background and now that we have that created we can add our little circle up top here too go back to your ellipse tool hold down shift to create that perfect circle again something like this would work and then you can do that control c to copy again or you can go to edit copy and then we're gonna to go to edit and click paste in place just like before. And then we'll shrink down that circle that's on top again to make your actual hole for your um, string or whatever you wanna do. And you can place it wherever you wanna place it at. I'm gonna go something like that. And then we're gonna highlight just this circle and this background piece here. And we'll unite those together again. And then now, um, this circle is just kind of floating here, so we can select both, and this time we can minus the front, and that will knock that circle out. I know you can't really tell here, but essentially what that does is if I add a fill, like this, that circle was knocked out there. So once it prints on wood, it's gonna look like this on wood. So hopefully that makes sense here. That's the entire back piece is now done. Now what we gotta do is worry about the front piece. Um, so for the front piece, it's a little tricky. We gotta do a lot of uh, repeating what we did before. Um, and what I mean by that is we're gonna copy this outline of your character again with Control C or Edit Copy again. And then we're gonna paste in place just like before. The reason why we're doing that is we're going to now cut the inside circle and this character out. So hold shift and select both of those. And this time we're going to minus the front and now the inside circle has been cut perfectly to the shape of this character here. And now we can select the character that was on the bottom and hold shift and click this outside layer and merge those together. So now uh, it is all connected here as one piece that it should be. And before you knock out the circle like we did here, we knocked out this circle, uh, before you do that with this piece here, we're going to copy and paste one more time, and I'll show you why here in just a second. We're going to copy it, and then we're going to edit, paste in place. And now that it's in place, you can go ahead and click your text tool. And if you click right on this little tiny line here, it'll put all your text wrapped around that design. That's why we did it, uh, that copy and paste, because it'll remove the center path that we clicked on here. So now you can type in any text you want. I'm just gonna put a bunch of random text like this, and you can make it any font that you want or any thickness you want, and it'll kind of wrap around your design, something like that. I just put this quote in over here and then once you have all of it typed out exactly what you want, let's say we're good with this text, obviously we don't want this text, but let's say we're good with this. You go up to type, and then we're going to click on um, create outlines. Oh, I might have to click off of it first. Let me click off and then back on. Type and then create outlines. There we go. What that does is it turns your text into a vector-based image and it gets rid of that secondary top layer that we created here. Um, I know it's hard to see because they are right on top of each other, so no matter if I would have changed the color of it, you couldn't really see that, but hopefully that makes sense here. Now what we can do is we can knock out this back circle here to the top layer, so we're gonna select both of these, and then we're gonna click the minus front, I believe it is, yep. Um, 
the reason why I know that worked is it didn't give me an error message. And then if I turn this to fill, you'll see what I'm talking about. It knocked out this entire circle right here. So this layer is gonna go on top of this layer. And I'm gonna turn that back to a cut line. And that is essentially how you create this design here, which will print and look like this here. So if I uh, select both of these and, and move it on top of each other, it's perfectly lined up. And that is essentially how you make those two layers for a design there. So this is technically two layers. Here's the back layer that I'm pulling down now. And then this is the top layer. Um, well, uh, you would want the text to be on the back layer. So you'd want to click on the text and the back layer together and then move it down. So it should, in theory, look like this. So the back layer will print with the text and then cut this shape out here. And then the front layer will print with the panda and cut this shape out here. And it'll ultimately look like this when you stack them on top of each other. So right here, this would be the, the top layer here. And then this would be the back layer here. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, and hopefully that I uh, did it as much detail as I could. I don't know how else I could explain that. But uh, I can't wait to see what you guys make with your uh, designs. And other than that, if you have questions or I went too quickly and you have a question about something, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. And I'll try and get back to you guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one.